Hey guys, JT Tran here, and today we have a return special guest, Jessica J, the marriage and family therapist who is also on Nutline. Say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. So today I want to talk about a very interesting sort of dating party called speed dating. You, have you ever done speed dating? Yes, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> As a guy, I hated it. What? Well, here's the thing. Back in the day when I graduated from college and yeah. I moved to California, okay. I thought I was a big man on campus. Right. You I was, you know, I was making six figures, driving right. over Mercedes. Swinging the dick. Yeah. <laughs> All good stuff you do. Exactly. <laughs> at college. Right. And I thought like, hey, on paper, I'm perfect. Like yes. six figures, good job, yes. you know, working out, all that kind of You're stuff. You're a catch. And so I go to my first speed dating event mm -hmm. and I'm like... Well, I'm a catch, so I will only choose the nines and tens, okay. right? Yes, right. And I get the score back. You know who chose me? Oh. No one. Oh, no. There's a big fat zero, right? Oh, no, they told you that. They told you that. Well, the thing is, like, then you get the results the next day, yeah. and there's like no one. It's like no one. That's messed up. It should be like yeah. Tinder, where like mm -hmm. if the people you chose chose you. Yeah. But I'm sure that was like a long time ago. Too. Yeah. yeah. But then what happened was, I was like, okay, I'm going to lower my standards a little bit more. Uh -huh. So I'm going to choose anyone that's cute. So <laughs> any, <laughs> so I chose like half of them. And you know what happened? What? Big fat no! zero. So for you. <laughs> and then finally I'm like, I'm like completely desperate at this point. I'm like, what is going on? Why does no one like me? So I'm like, I choose everyone. Everybody, like Pokemon. Everybody, and even if she's got like a snaggle tooth and a mole, my hair sticking out of it, and you know what happened Maybe next day? Maybe too. What happened? Zero. At that point, I'm like, what's going on? So I don't know if you guys have any trouble speed dating. I know I do. It sounds like it. Yes. It sounds like you have trouble. So what we're going to talk about is how to be successful at speed dating and not do what I did, which is have no one choose you. Okay, so Jessica. Yes. From a girl's point of view, what do you think as a girl uh, when you go into speed dating? You look at all these guys. What's going on in your mind? What's going on in my mind is okay. I'm gonna have to do a lot of work to not want to kill myself because it gets so <laughs> boring. It's a, it, you know what I mean? It's six in six minutes. I don't know how long yours was. Mine was like six minutes every time I go, and it's like everybody sits down. It's like, what do you do? Where are you from? Cool. Why are you single? What's wrong with you? So it but, feels like a job interview. Yes, it's a job interview, but you have six minutes, and those aren't the things I want to know about you. Though I, I don't care. Like on paper, we don't care. Um, I had this conversation with somebody today that guys are very visual. It's like, oh, I see mm -hmm. that she's good on paper. I see that I'm good on paper. I am worthy. She's worthy. But for girls, it's like until I can feel something from you in my conversation, I'm just gonna. It's just in one ear and out the other. So what does a guy have to do coming into this environment? Because on a certain level, there are advantages to speed dating because you sort of have this yeah. captive. As a guy, you have this captive audience. Like you can't go anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You're yeah. forced to sit here and hear me. But yeah. secondly, though, the on the, the flip side is these girls are set up on sort of a pedestal. Like yes. yeah. we are the guys you that are coming to around. you. It's so cute. <laughs> like look at all my little minions. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so it's kind of like both, where it's some good and some bad. So yeah. how is a guy going to be successful if he sees you there? Like, what should he do to increase his chances? I always say, I always say that give me something no other guy can give me. Um, some of the oh, best, that's great. yeah, some of the best times that I've had at speed dating was guys sitting down and be like, all right, so what did that guy just say? Because he looks, <laughs> he looks like a serial killer. Um, call attention to the moment. Call attention to your experience. It's the one thing we all have in common. Um, I'm not going to be able to relate to you saying that, like, I have this job and, like, this is what I do. It's, it's hit or miss. You don't want to live for those hit or miss moments because yeah. in this context, it's usually going to be miss. Like, you miss so much. You don't want to be JT back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> So uh, I always say, give me your experience, and if I can relate to it, which I always can relate to human experience, I'll be able to be that much more interested. Okay. One thing also um, in my mind is, what do you think is the most persuasive word in the English language? Persuasive? Persuasive. I don't know. That word is you. I was going to say <laughs> you. It is the word you. Yeah. So 
the mistake I think guys go into when they're about to sit down with a girl is like, okay, I need to prove myself to this girl. Yes. Right? So I'm going to talk about, about like, how much money I make, what kind of great job I have. Is that what you did? Yeah. <laughs> no. So then they, you know, so instead of doing that, all right, realize first of all, though, before I get into that, is like visually you need to be conveying a certain amount of confidence sure. by your body language, by your smile, yes. by how you move, and then, you know. Fine. Exactly. So instead of trying to say that, hey, I'm a rich, fantastic guy, yeah. you know, you convey a certain amount of confidence with your body language, and then when you sit down, talk about her, and instead of being like that douchebag that says, oh, I've got Mercedes or Rolls Royce or something <laughs> like that. And then you ask a little bit more in-depth questions that are intelligent, interesting, mm -hmm. um, like, what would constitute a perfect day for you? Or if you could choose some person in all of time to have dinner with, who would you want to sit down with, right? It's a little bit more interesting, um, and it, it shows that you're more interested in that person and right. what their thoughts are. Yeah, I say I always say everybody's number one interest is themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you can make it about like, hey, here's what's going on for me, how about you? Like, oh, me too. The second a woman can say me too to anything you have to say, that's when she's like, look, we have so much in common. Yeah. <laughs> we should get in bed. That's what we <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be so awesome if we went to bed. Yes. Alright, so what other sort of tips do you think a guy should know about speed dating? Like like fashion, what do you think? Fashion. A oh, please dress to impress. It's so mm -hmm. simple. Um I don't like I've seen guys show up in like shorts and shirts, like, no, this is not like the neighborhood bar where everyone knows your name. Yeah. I don't Unless know. Unless it's you. like maybe Sharky Speed Dating when you're on the beach. Do you go to Sharky Speed Dating? I used to back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> I know you're really doing her stuff. And then that might be it's okay, but yes. you know, if you live in Los Angeles, New York. Yeah, stress for the occasion. If mm -hmm. you're going to Sharky's and you know, or you're going to a hoedown, you obviously want to dress to impress. Right. And it's always better to show up than to, mm -hmm. you know. And the thing is, like, you guys might be thinking, well, no one's going to do that. I kid you not, I was at a speed dating event the other week, and a guy showed up wearing World of Warcraft. Aww. Like, seriously. <laughs> For real. <laughs> think about the filtering process. If there was a girl there who like loved World of Warcraft, that First of all, how many of those exist? And quite frankly, I don't think that was his thought process. Yeah, I think it was more was. like, I don't have any clothes, and so let me just freeze this and like show up. Good for him, if you're watching. But that probably was not his intent. That's no, no, intent. you should definitely um, dress a press. Like, Dress for that occasion, but do you think of being a little bit better than a schlob or a little you know? better than a schlob. Yeah. Just a little better than a schlob. Yeah. Um, and what else do you think a, a guy should do in order to uh, be successful at speed dating? One thing I would say is I've noticed a lot of guys do tend to over talk, okay. um, which is interesting to me because I, I would never think that, but because. Like you said, they're trying to prove themselves. It's like, oh, look, I can carry this conversation for six minutes. We're going to talk so much. I would say whatever she says, like, related. Be like, oh, all right, you go here. I never went there before. My parents grew up there, though. Yeah. Um, listen, I can't tell you how many times people, like, run right over my words. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was talking about earlier is, you know, the environment is set up where we are the gods. We have to roll around to every single girl, yeah. and then we have to, like, sort of prove ourselves. Yeah. But instead of doing that, convey your value through your body language, and then when you sit down, try to engage in a, something that's playful, mm -hmm. but also meaningful. As you said, provide something that the other guy didn't. Yes. Because if the other guy is like trying to, you know, show that, yeah, you know, I've got a wealthy, you know, fantastic I've got job, money, I've got cars, I've got a gigantic wiener. Yeah. Exactly. Cool, cool. Um, so... Any last words for our audience when it comes to speed dating? Like, what's a good success story? Like, you know, that worked for you. <laughs> okay. Well, so there was this one guy, and um, he sat down, and like I was saying, he sat down. And he's like, "All right, tell me your best guy so far, and I bet I could beat him." And that for somebody to sit down and say that, it was it was very confident, and it was very like in the moment. It was like now we had this secret world going on, <laughs> and it was cool. It was about our experience in the moment, and we had a great freaking time. And we went and had friends after, yeah. but he was the only person who was able to do that. Yeah. So. Because it requires a certain amount of physical competence that could yes. convey that. Because yes. all, you know, everybody's going to watch this and be like, all right, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to rewind, <laughs> write it down. But it's, like, it's not a bad thing to say, especially because you really can say it to mm -hmm. anybody at the speed of event, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you so much, Jessica. You're welcome. Um, how can our audience find more about you? Speak to sparkarazzle.com or find me at levelupseduction.com. Okay, all that information is going to be in the description box. All right, guys, be sure to subscribe, be sure to check her out. All right, thanks. Tonight on Nightline, Inner Beefcake. What did Jeremy Lin, Daniel Day Kim, and John Cho have that these guys don't? This Asian tycoon's 